In 2016, an Indianapolis Star investigation into USA Gymnastics brought to light one of the largest and most significant sexual assault scandals in history, perpetrated by team doctor Larry Nasser, who abused more than 265 victims. One of Nasser's survivors, Rachel Den Hollander, happened to see that Star article and contacted the newspaper, becoming the first woman to go public with her account of abuse. As a trained lawyer, Rachel had been meticulously building a case against Nasser after he had treated her when she was a young 15 year old gymnast in Michigan. Rachel's courageous action upended a system of power and unleashed a torrent of hundreds of other women who brought forward similar allegations against Nasser. Over a period of more than 20 years, at least seven different women told someone about being assaulted by Nasser. But systemic roadblocks and cover ups allowed him to continue his abuse at the highest levels of one of America's elite sports, where sponsorships and image trumped athlete safety. Survivors of Nasser included many high profile U.S. Olympic gymnasts, including gold medalists like Ali Raisman, Gabby Douglas, and Simone Biles. One such notable survivor is Maggie Nichols, who was a contender for the 2016 U.S. Olympic team. Netflix documentary Athlete A tells the story of how Maggie's coach overheard her talking about Nasser's inappropriate behavior. Her coach first reported Nasser to USA Gymnastics in 2015. Thus, Maggie became known as Athlete A in legal documents. Michigan State University Chief of Police Jim Dunlap and I are announcing today criminal charges against Dr. Larry Nasser. Nasser was ultimately convicted in the sporting world's biggest reckoning, and it was Rachel who was the last survivor to speak at Nasser's trial and pose the question, what is a girl worth? Nasser pled guilty in both federal and state court, but he never took full responsibility for his actions, leaving the courts to punish him in 2018 to decades behind bars in sentences that will run consecutively, guaranteeing he will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Maggie, it is so amazing to have you with us today. I want to thank you for joining Top of Her Game. I know it's been a real whirlwind in particular since the release of Athlete A. Mm -hmm. How are you doing in this time right now? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, but I'm doing I'm doing well. It's been a crazy few weeks since the documentary has come out. Um, you know, a lot of people reaching out on social media and a lot of text messages, calls, things like that. Um, but, you know, it's been... Uh, a lot of positive responses, which is really good. Um, but it's just been kind of a crazy time. But, you know, I think the documentary was incredible. So I think that the response was good. How hard was it for you to recount the story? Did you have to think long and hard about whether you wanted to jump into this process? It was a hard decision, but, you know, ultimately, you know, you kind of take a step back and realize, you know, if I can just help one person from making this documentary and going through everything, the interviews, the films and everything like that, you know, it'd be, it'd be worth it. And after it coming out and seeing it and with the responses and the, the um, responses that I did get, you know, some people were saying that, you know, this documentary has helped them in so many ways and things like that. So definitely made everything, everything worth it. We'll talk a little bit more about that because, you know, coming forward is very difficult. And for some people, it's just never a possibility. So what are some of the more inspiring responses you've received? Um, I mean, I've received a few um, that are very like personal and saying that they haven't told anybody and that, you know, after they saw the documentary and saw that, you know, that I could tell my story that they could, they felt comfortable telling me. Um, so, you know, those kind of stories, you know, really kind of touched my heart and just uh, them being able to, you know, really dig down deep and use their strength to, you know, just tell me is, is really important. So I think those are like the um, most touching messages that I've gotten. Um, but I, I mean, I've gotten so many and it's just, it's so incredible. I try to reply to as many as I can. And I'm sure it will go on and on for the rest of your life. I, you know, part of creating this incredible film was creating a space where you and Rachel and, and people felt like they could tell their stories on film. How um, were Bonnie Cohen and John Shank able to gain your trust? 
Um, I mean, they're just so kind and, you know, anything that I didn't want to do, I didn't have to do. So I just felt really comfortable with them. And, um, you know, they told me exactly what was going to be, um, happening with everything that we did and the interviews, the films and everything like that. So I just felt very, like I knew it was going on the whole time, which was, which was great. And I had a say in it too. So, um, they just made it a really comfortable atmosphere, which was, which was amazing. I really want to make sure that we get to your journey as an athlete, because, you know, the focus is on this documentary and, and that part of your story, but really, I mean, you are an elite athlete. You are an exceptional athlete. Um, so where did that start for you? What is your first recollection of getting into gymnastics and being that kind of competitor that you became? Yeah, well, I started when I was three. Um, I was kind of just a crazy kid. Um, but I just remember as, I don't know how old I was, but I just always remember, I loved the sport of gymnastics and I wanted to, you know, take as many turns as I possibly could. But I think when I really realized that I had a lot of talent, I was probably around like eight or nine, um, when my coaches kind of started putting me through the like elite track and things like that. Um, but you know, I've always loved the sport of gymnastics and always just wanted to become the best I possibly could. One of the things that intrigues me most about elite athletes is the psychology of it and, you know, working with things like negative self-talk. Your mom says that you just, you don't have a negative bone in your body. So how do you combat that? How do you like, you know, if you screw up a routine, how do you come back at it the next time without the negative self-talk kicking in? Yeah. I mean, this for me, if I do have that negative self-talk kind of like brings me down and the next turn or, you know, the next, whatever I'm doing will be like worse probably just because I have that negative mindset. So mm -hmm. for me, I just always try to like see the positive in it and see what I can do to fix it. Um, that's just kind of my outlook on, you know, gymnastics and in life too. How long did you have the Olympic dream for? When do you, when's the first time you recall wishing that for yourself as a kid? <laughs> as young as possible. Um, ever since I started, I feel like that was my dream. My goal is to go to the Olympics. I mean, I feel like it's any little girl's dream is to go to the Olympics, but that was my biggest goal and making it to Olympic trials was, you know, such an amazing um, accomplishment for me. So it's just, it's so cool. It's well documented in the film um, that you did not make the team. And by <laughs> all accounts, you 100% deserve to be there. Your mom regards that very much as a, as a punishment for coming forward. Uh, I'll ask you this. Was it harder for you or was it harder for your mom? I don't know. I think it was hard for both of us, but I mean, I, at the time, I didn't really know what was happening behind the scenes with mm -hmm. everything going on. And so I feel like my mom kind of really kind of had an idea. And so I feel like maybe that was almost harder for her than it was for me. As, as a mother, I can, that, I'm that just, uh, it broke my heart in, in a million pieces. When you, look back though in retrospect um do you feel somewhat validated by the fact that you just you know you did the right thing oh 100 percent um you know not making the team and things like that and i look back and you know see all the girls that came forward and everything like that i know that i did the right thing and i'm, I'm thankful i i reported it the time that i did and um you know i i know i, know I did the right thing Athlete Day really exposes the sort of toxic culture um, of USAG. And, and there have been so many exposés about the toxic culture of, of many sports. Do you have to do that to win? I mean, you're moving on to coaching in your life. So you have to, to have that in your mind. You, you don't need that to be victorious, do you? No, I mean, being tough is one thing, but you know, like the culture that we were going through and and things like that is not needed at all for, to, you know, make champions. I mean, you can see it, you know, here at OU, I mean, we're national champions, you know, how many years and, you know, the coaches may be tough, but in a positive way rather than, you know, tearing us down and being mean and things like that. So I don't think that that is needed to, you know, make champions. If you could make the whole experience healthier moving forward, and obviously people like you coaching is a big part of the part of that, but, um, what would you do? What would you do to change the culture of elite gymnastics? Yeah, just make it a more positive atmosphere. Um, you know, 
especially I know when I was in elite gymnastics, it was everyone had to look the same. Everyone had to do the gymnastics, the same things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's not really how gymnastics should be. Everyone's gymnastics is different. Everyone's bodies look different. Um, but I would just make it a more positive atmosphere and um, ensure that the girls are, you know, having fun and loving what they do. So Maggie, for people who, out there who may be suffering in silence, what's your message to them? What do you say? Um, just that they're not alone. Um, there's so many people who are with them, who support them. And that, I mean, if they're watching this, that they can reach out to me and talk to me and, and things like that. But the main thing is that they're not alone and that they have so many people who are behind them. And this is the final question that we ask of, of all of our guests. If you could say something, if you could give some advice to a young girl, you are young, but a young Maggie Nichols, what would it be if you could talk to her? Um, just to follow your dreams and do it for you and enjoy every single moment. Um, you know, that's kind of the biggest advice, you know, I would tell a younger Maggie Nichols or any young athlete is just to enjoy every moment, enjoy the hard workouts and enjoy the hard conditioning and competitions and moments with your teammates and coaches, because it'll go by really fast. It might seem slow in the moment, but it, it goes by fast and you'll miss it when it's gone. So just follow your dreams and enjoy every second. Well, Maggie, thank you so much for this. You are an inspiration and a true role model. Thank you. Thank you so much.